All yes, right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Mr. Cat here. We are all ready with the Southeast Hi, Asian Sinclair. Dota action. I'm Android, and I am being joined once again by the lovely Mott Packs. How you doing, man? Oh, hello, hello. Hi. I'm uh, I'm doing quite well. Nice. Uh, again, we're back. It's Mr. Cat. It's uh, lower bracket elimination. It's uh, what more could you ask for, really? Elimination here. So at the end of this best of three, one of these bad boy teams is going home. Bounty hunter. Oh. Harsh. Dire Execration team clearly team. Uh, pulling out all the stops there. Go straight for the Bounty Hunter second pick, giving Geek Fam a lot of time to deal with this. Yeah, interesting choice here. Uh, I can definitely understand the Dark Seer with the slider opener. Uh, and then they're just looking for that position four. I guess Things the kind of crazy thing is they opt for the Bounty over the Earth Spirit. Hi, Certainly so going to be the most surprising thing I think people would take away from this, especially considering it is Execration, it is Southeast Asia, and it is still current patch. And Earth Spirit is kind of king. So they uh, must have some sort of a strategy in mind, I would think, or uh, some sort of a plan that uh, they want to utilize this bounty in some uh, some interesting ways, perhaps in that pressure on the safe lane is their biggest plan, something that Bounty's a little bit better at than Earth Spirit, but maybe lacks that same presence in the mid. Five seconds. Right. So uh, everyone in chat, I tried my best with audio levels. If there's something Reserve way off, time. please let me know. If Trent is just like booming, like the the voice of God <laughs> himself, just, I try. Just give me a little heads up. There's a two minute delay, so only so much I can do. But yeah, back to the draft here. Uh, very typical pick so far from Geek Fam. Nothing I've seen that surprised me. But uh, those guys can pull out a lot of fun different heroes. They've all got pretty wide pools. They've got some interesting strats no. they've been practicing. So. I'm interested to see how this is going to change, you know, game to game. I think game one, we might see some standard stuff, but game two and three, I think it might get a little wacky. Yeah, Geek Fam have been playing a lot of Dota lately. Uh, for Execration, it's basically just been the Mr. Cat games you guys would have caught here, but Geek Fam have been um, not only being very versatile, as you say, here in Mr. Cat, but they're playing a lot uh, in some other cups too. And, uh, they, you know, this is a team that is well known, especially like Teehee himself, for coming up with quite a few of the more innovative ideas in Dota. Uh, those mid PLs, those mid jugs. So, uh, you, you look at this jug, and you might even want to just say like, "Oh, this must be mid or something like that." And then just four days ago, they play a game like this, kind of a similar opener, and you end up with the uh, T he mid PL. Like <laughs> this guy, they're fully willing to still oh, yeah. opt into those strategies. And I uh, up against like a bounty hunter or something like too is one of those times where they love to bring out that uh, doppel gangering asshole. I gotta ask how that worked out for them. Oh, they won. They they, they won they with the good mid PL. Yeah, I've seen they won a game in Mr. Cat with a mid PL. I mean, he he Dota dude. Wow. He invented mid jug. Mid jug or mid Phantom Lancer? Both. That okay? Because I've seen mid jug. That is that's not shaking up the boat too much. The mid PL is a little bit, a little bit out no, there. It was, he's the the originator, the creator. Is he a, uh, is he an Ags fan on the PL? Uh, I don't think I've seen him get them. I'm sure he would. It's just one of those items that's like impossible to fit into the build. Well, that's like the only thing that makes him viable, at least in my my shitty opinion. No. Okay. No. But but I appreciate the. I mean, I love the Agnips. It's definitely the only way that makes him viable, fun wise. <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh yeah. It's all about the clown factor. We'll see if we uh, wind up with him. But Witch oh. Doctor, solid hero up against Slider. He likes to dive towers. He can punish that pretty heavily with the cask. That um, in-lane aggression kind of melee support idea, Witch Doctor always going to be pretty handy. I played with, like, the world's most aggressive Witch Doctor in one of my pubs the other day. It was so much fun. I was, like, this little bitch Chaos Knight that wouldn't initiate, and he's just walking up to four heroes and maledicting all of them. It was fantastic. So. Yeah, Witch Doctor is one of those heroes that uh, I feel like when you first start playing Dota 2 where he's one of those supports that makes you realize just how impactful you can be in the lane against, like, offlaners and stuff. He's got that great right-click animation, like him and Dazzle, you know? You uh, can really mess somebody up, get yourself an early Null Talisman if you really hate them. They got those those lovely attack ranges, so he's a good safe lane Crystal hero. Made. And when you've got someone like a bounty that wants to be all over the map, it's always nice to have one of those more solid position fives. All right, so CM picked up. Obviously, Aura going to be going to work. I just I got to know what Execration are going to do about the Bounty Hunter, because they picked it after a Slardar was picked up, so they've got that Corrosive Haze for Vision. Is there any way... I mean, Execration, they can't go back for a Oracle. What else do they have that can possibly purge Corrosive Haze, or are they just not give a fuck? 
Yeah, they'll probably just have to not worry about it for the most part. Um, a little obnoxious. I mean, it's not Spirit Breaker levels of game ruining for Bounty Hunter, I don't think. Uh, you know, the slider has to actually be in range when you're near a sentry or something like that for the Cross of Haze to be tagged on top of you, and he's just going to try and live his life. Uh, at the same time, you know, Geek Fam will have some of the same problems through, with track, but Jug, um, Natural Manta Builder, he has to spin too, just to be uh, a nuisance, so not uh, too much of an issue. All right, so picks coming up. I mean, I don't even know what Execration are doing here. They're going to have a decent lane with the Darkseer, Bounty Hunter. He can do that invis Ion Shell junk, but as soon mm -hmm. as Bounty Hunter walks into vision range, there's so much to hold him in place. Crystal Maiden just frostbites, Slardar yep. goes in, Corrosive Haze, crush him down, and just punch him in the gut like a middle school bully. Yeah, CM was a fantastic pick here. She's really good against Darkseer in lane because you can just freeze the Iron Shell creep, so that has to change up your tactics as a Darkseer. Uh, you either have to put it on yourself and get very aggressive, which then just opens you up Slug. to the Frostbite, uh, or you have to do, like, Iron Shells on your own creeps and stuff, and it's just not that great. Or rather, on the enemy creeps and stuff, and it's just not that great. You're, like, missing out on farm and stuff, and it's obnoxious. So uh, they will go for, well, as he said, a Purge. It'll be just for himself, the Slark, and uh, we'll save that mid-hero. This might have been one of those chances where Execration could have considered taking their mid simply because Ember is going to be very strong here. Um, they have the Iron Shell, they have a Bounty Hunter, a lot of mobility across the map, but with that final pick, I guess they just really want to save it for the Ember. Uh, I'd be surprised if Geek Fam don't either ban it or take it for themselves, though. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that's got to be on the, the front of your mind. Hmm. Or you just do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Outworld Devourer, he can just kind of leave his... Uh, his arcane orb on relatively early because crystal maiden's going to be filling up that mana pool with the arcane aura so he's going to do a lot of damage very quickly yeah not uh, a fun place to be an ember either that means uh, they could off back in towards like an invoker perhaps for execration but they don't have the best supports to set up for it and uh doesn't do that well with the darks here either or they can just say, you know what, it's an awful lane. It's going to be the worst thing ever for an Ember, but we're just going to do it because it's going to work so well with Iron Shell. We'll try and bully as much as possible with the Bounty Hunter and, and put our attention there, but we'll have to see. It's it's very rare that you're ever going to want to take an Ember into an OD, so they'd have to be pretty committed. Uh, if, if I mean, it's also pretty deep. rare to take a Bounty into a Slardar, so I think Execration are kind of throwing the rules to the wind, man. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. There goes the Velo. Oh, Velo's back. I didn't even notice. Yeah, he's, a little uh, bit of a shuffle thing going on. Yeah, well, he's been stood in um, their last games. He was uh, last two series for Mr. Cat. Both times he had a stand in. The stand in played great, though. Guy was awesome. Who was it? Um, it was a. I can't even remember what his name was, but he was a. Uh, he was not, not a known player. Uh, Death Sama. That was it. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, he played well. Uh, they lost, but <laughs> I thought he played well. Yeah. It's always intimidating to go into a pro game like that and try to just blend in. Don't let anyone notice that you're not one of them. But I'm sure Geek Fam, they're ready to be back with their full roster and go in. Like you mentioned, Elimination Series right here. One of these teams gets to move forward in Mr. Cat. The other one goes home. Last picks coming out. Geek Fam, get one more chance to ban. I mean, they've got to be thinking about banning the crazy stuff because I think Execration are, are right on that line of crazy. They're willing to come at you with whatever they got. Yeah, I'm wondering. I think the safe ban is just Invoker. If you don't want to have to deal with that hero, because he's kind of obnoxious. Uh, I don't see like if I think you just give them the Ember if you really want with the Oath. and maybe they'll just ban it and just like okay, we don't want to bother. But it's a terrible matchup for the Ember, so Geek Fam likely okay with handing it over. And uh, there was some other hero that I can't. Oh, Alchemist is still in the pool, right? So uh, he's kind of one of those ones up against OD that we might see. You just kind of throw him to the wind mid, let him get farmed up, and try and play this sort of like a vision game with your bounty hunter. We start doing our like our charts here with their squads. Um, we have really good team fight from Execration that it, it could come. It's like almost there. It's like a like three stars out of five, but one hero could immediately make it five, right? Any sort of like a vacuum combination or something like that. Or they can just go the split push route, which is also pretty good um, just with iron shells and whatnot. Legion commander. But, all right. I like the Tinker Ban. I think that's another pick. Uh, really common in Southeast Asia. If you can get yeah. your hands on it, you grab it. So something that we're not ne necessarily used to seeing in all metas, but really powerful there. The Legion Commander last pick. I love this choice. You've got yeah, the lockdown. There's 
and that's uh, those purges again, right? So definitely a game of purging. So uh, getting rid of the tracks and whatnot for everyone. And then, yeah, as you said, trying to grab onto that Slark. Templar Not too bad. And I'm going to go for the TA. That's one of my favorites. I love me some TA. She's fun to spam mid, but... I, I just wonder, there's so much short-range initiation. Darkseer's going to have to walk at you with an Ion Shell. Same story with Bounty Hunter, Slark. He's going to have to pounce, get real close. Templar, she's ranged, but not really. A and Geek Fam have so much punish for getting too close. Yeah, this is an interesting pick for sure. It's not one that, um, like, it's, I've seen Geek Fam pick a couple TAs lately, but I haven't seen X Creation at all. She's one of those heroes that, like, there's some teams you're just expecting it, right? Those players, you're like, okay, we got to watch out for that that TA. She kind of replaces that 10th fan in a lot of scenarios, but um, not something we've seen X Creation pulling out lately. So looking forward to this one. Uh, they're going to try and kind of get this dual timing of the Slark and the TA right around that same time, and she'll have Deso Hill of Shadowblade, or she'll just have the Blink too. It's not the worst game for it. I kind of like Deso a little bit more, but we'll see. And then they just mech Darkseer. And try and push, win fights with track, and snowball their way to victory with a Roche. But uh, I think Geek Fam definitely have some tools to counter that. All right, we are loaded in for game number one, Mr. Cat season two. We got the playoffs here: Execration versus Geek Fam in a best of three. I think that this is not going to be an easy series. Both teams going to be very. Weasley, they really want to get in here. They want to take it one step further. Mr. Cat, it's now or never. We're in eliminations. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what are your bets for here, Trempax? Who do you think is going to be the stronger lanes, the stronger team? Uh, I think Legion's going to have a pretty good time down bottom. If she's a bad time, it means Lumix has been pulled down there. So that's, uh, in the end, will just help out Geek Fam more, I think. So I'm... Favoring Geek Fam pretty heavily with this draft overall, I think, game one. I think it has a, a higher chance of success in my eyes, but uh, we'll see. A lot of it for Excretion, I think, coming down to Lumic and just he needs to play this very well and very efficient on a bounty hunter. He needs to try and figure out, like, where do I go? Where am I going to be best used? Should I be uh, in the jungle? Should I be chasing around this Crystal Maiden and trying to slow her down? Like, is there even a point of that? Not really. Like, she's just going to find one big creep and then there's Aura and she doesn't care. So. Can I go mid and help a TA? Well, no. Not for like four levels. <laughs> I don't know uh, how much work he'll really be able to do besides just like your typical Iron Shell harass top. Hey, he's already having a little bit of trouble here. Already popped into one clarity. He's just been trying to keep up that shadow walk around, but it's starting to cost him in terms of mana. We'll see what's going to be going down here is Teehee going for it. Oh, oh nice one. Oh, we got it. That. Very nice. So it's going to be three runes going the way of the Radiant. They're feeling all right about that. So, I mean, that's a GG right there. That's straight GG. It's, it's over. <laughs> Go next. Okay. We'll see. Bounty Hunter is going to get pinged out. It's pretty obvious he's been poking around this side of the map. And I mean, you talked about it being dangerous for him to hop mid. He's going to try anyway. Oh, yeah. No, this is definitely um, early on. I just want to do this. It's, it's not so much that it's like dangerous. It's just that the odds of you killing Tihi are so low into like levels three and four and whatnot. But um, right away, this is what you, you always want to see. Just punch the hell out of this guy in lane. Level one, bully him. Speaking of bullying, down bottom, 5593 and the Witch Doctor just fearless, walking out, maledicting the Legion, and she'll be okay. She can tango through. Raji on the Slardar getting a little ambitious, chasing the Radiant pretty deep into their own territory. Got the Darkseer down relatively low, and now there's going to be a Raji sandwich. It's going to be any issue here with him getting out. Looks like he's just completely fine. That's true. I hadn't even considered the fact that we have Raji Slardar again. So now this game is like double over. <laughs> Raji God. My, man, he is by far the best Slardar performances of this tournament so far. Uh, he has gotten to play it quite a bit as well. I mean, to his credit, but he has been absolutely killing it. The uh, the second... No, no, wait, oh, that's a tough call. I can't decide what's been more impressive. The Boombox CM through Mr. Cat or the Raji Slatter. It's tough. Uh, I, I think Boombox comes a close second, but uh, he's also been killing it lately. Yeah, it's going pretty well. We're going to have a rotation up. Raji and our Slardar watching this very carefully. They can't get eyes on Lumic, though. Got three dire heroes ready to kill, but just can't find their prey. Yeah, that'll be fixed with some levels. Yeah, the early pain on the DJ paying off here. 
thing is that he wasn't a second level of Iron Shell, which makes Bounty a lot less effective, and Lomax just roams away. Mid lane looks like Tiki and Nando just going in for a standoff, just trying to go slap each other to death. TA is going to go immediately fill up with a nice salve just delivered from the courier. Now Luma going to be walking under this sentry ward, so they know that Dyer has vision in the area. But can they still initiate onto this OD? They're going to try here. He's got himself a defensive astral if he needs it. One more hit, though. Oh, the astral goes onto the bounty, and Tiki walks away. Looks like Templar Assassin just got distracted by creeps and didn't pressure forward. Didn't think that was going to be a kill. Oh, nice save there. Yeah. The, uh, a little bit of a YOLO sentry by Lumic there, too. Just, like, really hoping it was going to be in the mid. Uh, I thought maybe he'd try and, like, zone him out first and then go for the sentry deny. But now that just means he loses his sentry. He continues. And he even got that bonus regen, too. So he's just, like, right back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So OD having a pretty successful time here. Nando has been doing all right in terms of last hits. Uh, keeping ahead of the OD. By a fair margin down bottom, it looks like we are going to have a rotation in from Raji. And they want to get some stuff going. Velo's going to go ahead, take that cast, pick that Maledict. But is there going to so be any slow. sort of follow-up here? Which Doctor's just slugging his way into the trees, but he won't make it. First Blood goes the way of this offlane Legion. Up in the top, Lumic able to snag the kill on the Crystal Maiden as well. Well, that bottom kill couldn't have come uh, in faster than to save the First Blood at the very least. To make yep. sure they uh, secured that for themselves, but... Damn, Raji. I, I can't believe he just got that done as level one slider. He didn't even have sprint. Just like walks in against <laughs> the crotch off. So uh, good recovery there. Just like finding that right angle and timing. The silent acceptance for Witch Doctor. Like he starts walking. Oop, up top. Hey, I got the freeze in the kill. Yeah, he just starts walking towards the tree line and eventually just stands there. Like I'm not making it. I'm going out with my own way. Yeah. He's uh, back in the revenge train, lands a maledict onto Raji, but it's just going to be Gabby getting some decent farm bottom lane, but our big last hit winner is going to be our Juggernaut up top. Psyonix, even with the Ion Shells, not having too hard of a time. 24 and 15. Oh, gotta love Jug, right? It's Jug or Life Stealer every time against Darks here, it seems. Just great hero for it, and um, that control from the Crystal Main, of course, is helping out once again. There's a reason this was like the most tried and true duo of all time, right? Jug CM. Going a lane together, it's great. Now that roots are even better, it's uh, even more powerful than before. But single sentry, one frostbite, and just every time that bounty's going to be dead. And Darkseer has to worry about the same stuff too. Anytime he's near lower HP levels, and currently only at about 70%. Oh, yeah, some pings down bottom. It looks like this, uh, this duo is going to get away with things. Bounty Hunter wants to go in, wants to make something happen. Raji could just crush. He's only level 3, so certainly no corrosive haze yet. But. Looks like Radiant there, operating a little short staff as we've got Nando and 5593 chunking away at some neutral creeps. Yeah, I think um, Geek Fam should know that Raji's down bottom, or the, rather that um, Lumic's down bottom now too, because of where Raji was standing and then a range creep started hitting him. DJ, he's got himself a surge. Is he going to go for it? Well, he, he tried. Yeah, nice play by Crimson to hold that. Gabby. Trying to run away, there's going to be a cast. It doesn't have godlike bounces. Oh, it's not going to be high enough level to keep it ping-ponging back and forth. Gabby's able to leap himself away, but oh, does man. end up going down. Elo gets credit for that kill, and looks like this duo is still going to apply some serious pressure to the spot lane, knowing that well, baby Witch Doctor and a Bounty Hunter cannot push them back alone. I can't believe 5593 is such a low level. I guess we hadn't even talked about that, but I mean, it's DJ on the darks here. <laughs> I hadn't even like taken note of that fact that... They did a little bit of a swap here, uh, putting 5593 on the Witch Doctor instead of offlane, but either way, he was way too low level there. Like, level 2 at, what was that, like 5 minutes in, they're diving your tower? That hurts. I mean, it's could like, have been yeah. just because he was trying to give as much as possible to Sark, but damn. Well, they see that this rune just went away. Is there any way to get vision on Lumic? He's gonna walk on through for now as Geek Fam can't afford all the dust and sentries they need just yet, but things are spiraling up in a decent direction, but... We'll see if Execration can bring this one back. I mean, what needs to go right for Execration right now for them to be able to, to hold this fight and take the mid-game? Ah, uh, well, some levels. Oh, oh DJ. Uh, Probably... Eh, yeah, let's see. He's got TP. 17. Oh, 7. Eh, he's just he gotta might make be okay. Crystal Maiden not, uh, not Frostbite, which is uh, a hard thing to do. Oh, my. That looks like it hurt. Omni Slash expended right to the belly of that Darkseer. Yeah, not uh, quite fast enough on that one, it seems. So, uh, well, for them, 
probably use some rotations mid maybe and just try and accelerate your TA a little bit or at least try and keep her steady. She's doing okay for now, right? She's ahead of the OD by about like 500 now at this point. Bottom, a little worried about Gabby here. Uh, I think we're all a little worried about Gabby. They got the crush. Oh, he's in his ult, so they gotta at least wait that one out. Halo there with the duel, but they're not gonna be able to catch up to him, so nice play by Gabby. Quick response time there. And right back to harass the mid lane. Tiki having a lot of fun uh, with these astral, impri astral imprisonments. Already level 4 on that, so just keep a Nando at bay. Keep a Nando from farming the way he wants to. And yeah, now we're going to start like harkening back that whole idea of them trying to snowball from the Radiant side, but Gabby's just being pushed off the wave. He's at 2200. Oh, going in onto Raji. Raji doesn't seem to care all that much. There's going to be... Raji getting low, but the duel there, they know if uh, Gabby tries to turn this. Yeah, they can be initiate, and that's going to be the first duel, potentially, the first duel victory in that of our Legion Commander. 5593 five, thinking about going in for that very low health Slardar, but just does not want to deal with a full health Legion. 6 to 1 now. Time to set the snowball for Velo. And uh, the Radiant side. Not oh, looking so hot right now. DJ not even quite into his arcanes yet. He still needs at least headdress. Or maybe he'll go like helm and try to be a little bit faster perhaps than a mechanism and try and start getting stuff done. But I would definitely be concerned about their game plan at the current moment. Yeah, I mean, you look at the net worth, and the top of the chart is going to be Juggernaut and Legion Commander. Legion, we've seen, have a pretty successful offlane, but Juggernaut... He's that uh, silent boy. We saw that Omni slash out of him earlier onto the Darkseer, but he's just been completely farming since then. Hasn't left his lane, hasn't had a reason to. Smoke up here from our dire side. Looks like we're trying to rotate the Radiant Jungle. We're gonna backtrack. Looks like maybe go in towards that mid TA. And, yep, squiggle down. They got the crush. They do. They burn through the refraction charges. There's no meld available. Rest in peace, Nando. OD Dota. <laughs> What a hero. Got him. Just, he's so good with anyone who can rotate. And they haven't even brought Raji in this entire time. Like, they, they definitely sacked Tihi a little bit. Like, they're putting way more pressure on the side lanes. They let the Storm get up on the TA. But. Once again, goes for the surge out, but takes an Omni Smash. Omni Slash to the gut. Down bottom, another duel coming in, but this one's going to be close. The duel victory does go to Velo. Looks like Velo may die. One more tick of the Maledict is going to spell his demise. Lumix so low. We'll go down to Raji's staff. Oh, Raji? Oh, he's in. Oh, yeah. Raji, he got that green light. He's ready to just slam it out. There's going to be that heal from the Witch Doctor. Is it enough? One more. Hey, Raji got a double kill. Gee, okay. Nicely done. Raji God. Absolutely. So many slider yeah. games. Mr. Cat. Now he's the two. What? Almost 1,100 gold here at 10 minutes with support slider. He's ahead of DJ. Yeah. The offlane Darks here. That Blink Dagger is not far off. He's been real mobile. He's got his level 7 in just a couple of moments. He's he's, he's feeling very good. Oh, he's going to find TA finishing up these stacks, too. Let's just leave. Yep. Not looking so hot here for Execration. Oh. Uh, still oh, don't God. have track. I lost control of my camera. My bindings. There we go. Sorry. Crimson okay. walking around looking for DJ. Up in this top lane. Did she find the frostbite? She's holding it. Just waiting. There's a bounty hunter on her though. This could be a little bit dangerous. Crystal Maiden may not know what she's in for here. Getting low from the ball. Vacuum back on through and does go down. Psyonix does not have an Omni Slash. He's very low on mana. They might still be able to get some sort of kill going down here. Raji, he cast out the Corrosive Haze, not on the bounty hunter. So they lost vision of him. Alright. A little bit of a run back there, 275 for our decks here, and more importantly, helping Bounty Hunter now get up into level 6. Start chucking out some tracks, see if they can get anything going, but that's another duel. Velo finds one solo bottom with the armlet. Damn, this Legion is scary. I have not seen an armlet before mobility item Legion in Lumic might time. be dead too. Getting Slardard up top. Oh, that was actually a sick stun. That was a nice save. Was, well played, Lumic. Yeah, that was probably the only way he could have gotten out of that one, but they'll buy him a little more time to go and farm up his next items, and well, Crystal Maiden's back alive. Not going to be too sour about that. In terms of overall net worths, it looks like Geek Fam, their cores are really getting to where they need to be, and he's a little bit worried for Execration still. There's Slark has some growing to do. They are finding a little bit of breathing room for him, though, I guess. Like, he's been in lane for a little while. 
Elo's killing the support instead of Gabby, so <laughs> there's that. And uh, they've also been able to deward their jungle thanks to the help of Splark, but uh, they'll find a couple here as well on the Dire now. So, tower down. Have we had any pressure on these towers at all from the Radiant? Just the TA mid, it seems, and, well, Iron Shell stuff top, I suppose. Uh, Raji but. just barrel rolling down mid. Thought he was going to go for that TA, but holds himself back for now. Their best hope is if Geek Fam try and get over aggressive with like Raji and Velo, maybe their first blink play or something with the duel. If uh, Nano happens to be nearby or something, or even if a cask flies out and catches too, maybe they can find a big fight with the, the Deso when it comes online here in a moment. It's really all they can hope for. It's an interesting play. Radiant scan their ancient pit to make sure no one's doing their ancients, but it's a crystal made in illusion, so they get a little bit of false information. I'm thinking that maybe Legion Commanders doing some work in the ancient pit. Uh, that's a good body block, too. Guarantees no ancients. Absolutely. It's going to make TA's life just a little bit harder. You know, TA is doing pretty well for herself. I think all things considered, landing against an OD with infinity mana from Crystal Maiden. I did, a, did an okay job going into that first item desolator. Meanwhile, Slark is just going to eat it down here. And uh, another dual victory going the way of Velo. That's 40 dual damage at 13 minutes in. Yeah, that'll be our blink reveal, so... Uh, can't really fault the Slark too much on that one. Going down there, but uh, they certainly gave some space to Nando mid too. Like, there was no rotations, I don't think, up until that very late one where they like wrapped around the Ancient Pit at like nine minutes or something with the uh, this Teehee setup. You know, that's one of the best parts about OD is just being able to set up for these Slardars or these Earth Spirits and whatnot. And uh, instead, all that side lane pressure, you can tell, I mean, how far everyone else is behind, and TA can't do everything on her own. She definitely needs that big backup, so eliminating her support staff is going to make her life a little bit easier. But this is where that big problem could theoretically come from. Three Blink Daggers, all mobility, no tankability items, and now we have a Deso on Nando. So, if Geek Fan get over aggressive and do anything insane, there is the potential for execution to turn this around. Probably going to be their best moment, but Geek Fan could also just, you know, get good Blinks off and absolutely crush them. I think we are we are definitely going to see some insane things, but who that benefits, I don't know, because Raji, I mean, he you can tell he's sprinting around. He wants to go. He wants to jump and crush. They got they got to play safe for now, and still, Juggernaut is chilling in top lane. We've seen this before. I think every time I've seen Geek Fam, you've just got Psyonix doing his own thing. The rest of the team rotates his four, and it's ridiculous, because by the time Juggernaut's going to join up with his team, they are going to be fully slotted. Oh, God! Slark just got absolutely evaporated. We're going to see what's going down here. There is going to be a nice witch doctor. Oh, Raji going to eat eaten most of that. And oh, the back wall brings everyone back up to the high ground. Sanity is dumped down. Sayonix wants to go for it. Look for an Omni Slash. There's a sentry plop down. They kill off the witch doctor. They're looking for more as they bring Crystal Maiden forward to Alt. Nando doesn't stand a chance. That's a double kill for the Legion Commander. Very nice Alt from Crimson. Execration did what they could with the witch doctor ult with the back wall, but it wasn't enough to save their lives. Yeah, that was just nicely played. All right. No hope in that engagement. They killed the satyr. They killed little purge creep. He did nothing wrong. Well, that's what we say about Roach too. And he dies so many times a game. The eternal struggle. Oh. Raid mail next on Legion. Raji getting yes. up to his next couple items. His wand. Oh, look at that. He's just he's rich. One tome, dust, TPs, the life. He has a full stash, dude. He's going to feel like a baller flying that in. <sighs> but yeah, it's, it's not going so well. My main concern here is Slark, who's now, you know, below Slardar's farm. Up top, we've got DJ just TPing out, doesn't want to deal with Juggernaut's nonsense. But I mean, how does the Slark get back into it? Slark is such a snowball hero, but... He can't do anything. He's still looking for the first component of his Shadow Blade after Treads. He's got no items. He's got no kills. He's got no levels. It's it's so hard. He's 0-5. Oh, Raji. Yeah, not that's gonna be Sentry. Too yeah, you're, I mean, you're looking at it, though. This is, like, all he can do is just try and farm up his jungle. At the very least, you're a Slark, so you can help deny out the vision that they have and make your farming a little bit safer. So you can tell your supports, like, oh, ward here, ward here. But uh, they just need to split push. They need to push waves as much as possible. And that's basically going to have to be just DJ who can do it. He now does. He went for the helm, which I think is the right call this game. Can use that to split push a little bit better too. Uh, Mechanism's not really going to save you in these engagements right now. Plus, he would be even further away from Mech and Blink. <laughs> yeah, had he, you know, 
gone in towards that. Very expensive. So, a little bit of a cheaper option here, and still a very popular choice uh, for our Dark Sears, but... I'm uh, just gonna try and sack like a tier 2 bot, I guess. He got it at this point. You can't deal with Zionix, who on this free farming level 14 juggernaut is certainly looking uh, a hell of a lot more shaped up than the Slark right now. We've got an Ion Shell Centaur making its way into the woods. Let's see if the Centaur can stop. He's going for it. He gets the stomp, but not before the dual victory. Now there is going to be a nice Witch Doctor all doing a little bit of work on TTP especially, but Raji goes in, they get the crush, they get the kill on the Witch Doctor. Dust sprayed out, and it does connect out to Lumix. They're going to keep this chase up. And there's nothing Lumic can do to purge off this dust as they got a centaur instead of the purge creep. Another crush comes in and Raji's just gonna go to town. But is it gonna be enough oh, here? Oh yo, Raji! <laughs> that was sick. Oh, oh, they got the haze though. They still got the vision. Raji, are you gonna do it? Oh, it was so close. Here we go. Raji makes it out alive. The centaur can't do anything about it. Come on, Raji. Come on, Raji. Oh, almost his blink. Oh. Nice. oh, he didn't need it anyway. All right, good stuff. So uh, they also got TA in the trees with the CM ult and a uh, an ult, a um, uh, sentry. That is the word. Whew. Uh, with T just showing up too. So uh, there was a kill on the Legion, and Slark was like pouncing on top of her as the Maledict killed her. Sadly, so all that gold went to the Witch Doctor instead, uh, which is very unfortunate because it was like 814. Would have really helped Slark. That but would have definitely helped Slark. But you know, no at least he has his Shadow Blade. Okay, he's got some shoes now. He's got a full magic wand. His witch doctor's feeling good, man. Oh, Gabby. He's shadow plated up. Looking for the first initiation here. Looks like Crystal oh, Maiden will so be the play, here. but Crimson might be able to turn this. They go in. Crimson's still alive. Tracked up, but still rolling. And they got the dual victory. Oh, God. It's a massacre. Nando, one of the only survivors, and is just going to take an Omni Slash right to the back of the head. Bounty Hunter now just scrambling away for his life as his tier 2 is taken through backdoor protection. Oh my golly gee. Looks like Geek Famer looking pretty good for game number one. Yeah, it's been looking that way for a long while for sure, but they uh, they didn't falter when they bought their three blinks. They went and got Roche, they secured that up. They played well in these last couple fights. Velo is just having an insane game on Legion Commander. Doesn't even really need anyone else in these fights. Raji getting the big three-man crushes off and just allows you to pick and choose who he wants to duel. So suddenly high ground. And uh, Raji just kind of scouting out who's coming. Yeah, this is uh this has gotta hurt right now, Dire. They have no damage on any of their tier ones and Geek Fam take the tier three and some racks. So Pretty undeniably looking good for Geek Fam. I mean, what's Execration's path back in this? Because your Slark is just a liability at this point. You can't really send them into that front line on the battlefield because they'll just get froze and dropped. Gotta keep trying to take it late. It's really all you can do. Uh, not that late game looks that much better for them, but you just hope that along the way you win some fights, you get some track gold, and you, uh, you turn it around through itemization. Nando can keep doing this. Like, once he actually has a blink, his split push will be pretty good. Um, Raji and uh, Velo will be doing their best to stop it, though. Scan coming in. Looks like there's going to be Dire looking for something. Velo <laughs> crawling around. This is ambitious. He's in literally all of them, but he can go just two-shot a Witch Doctor. That seems fair and balanced. Raji going to go forward. Gets tethered by the Slug It's going to be a nice back wall. Raji's still alive. I'm dropping frames like crazy as there's so much madness going down. Crystal Maiden, she's just dancing for the fun of it. And they're going to move forward and take out Lumic as well. Good game comes out at 20 minutes in as Geek Fam just get an unstoppable start. What a game number one here, Trent. Yeah, that was brutal. That was exceptionally well played by Geek Fam. One of the best Legion Commander games and reasons to pick this hero that you're going to see. She had so many uh, good, like good reasons to be drafted here. She helps purge off the tracks. She's good in lane uh, just for sustaining. When you know it's going to be a weaker laner, because they have this roaming bounty hunter that doesn't want to commit his full attention to you, and you're going to like this dual lane where Raj can come and help out. Fantastic game. And Velo, like, this is what you miss from Legion Commanders. This is why the hero gets flamed a lot. Is it, It's very difficult to keep that momentum going and getting those couple early duels. And then just every time duels up, Velo was there. He's just, like, blinking and initiating on someone. And a lot of that coming from Raji, as well as just Crimson, being a CM who can not only roam around the map, but keep your own farm up and going. Like, these non-stop, you know, overwhelming odds. And <laughs> just, like, press the attacks over and over, keeping yourself sustained thanks to that mana. 
it was a very solid draft from geek fam looking forward to see uh, what they pull out in our next one for sure Absolutely. Again, this is a best of three series. Execration now have to win game two and three if they want to stay in the tournament. It's coming right down to the wire there. More Mr. Cat action coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 